What are the most profitable businesses? So let's talk about that. You're gonna be shocked at the answer. I'm gonna give you a lot of ideas. So if you have a pen and paper, you better get it. So number one, I wanna talk about the businesses with the lowest failure rate, believe it or not, are the most boring businesses. And so a lot of you, you wanna be an influencer, you want it to be about you, you're gonna be shocked at some of the businesses I tell you that are more profitable and really boring. Number two, what's the key factors that actually contribute to the profitability? And number three, what are the aspects of businesses that are misunderstood, completely underestimated? Okay, laundry mats are number one. They have the lowest failure rate and can be extremely profitable when you put in additive revenue. So they have over 94% success success rate, which is extraordinary. High, high profit. The startup costs are a little bit because you got to get all the equipment. And typically you can either rent the building or you own the building. And you can have remote management, which means you don't really have to have anybody on site. Now, if you want to ramp up the profitability of it, you add vending, you add coffee, you add other things to actually keep them in the stores. I've had some of my clients and seen some where they actually have a little play area for kids. They have all sorts of extra things to add revenue while they're sitting waiting for the laundry to be done. What else can you do? So let's talk about a few other companies and kinds of companies that are the most profitable. So believe it or not, rental real estate, and especially now with short term and Airbnb rentals, the people who are actually managing them can jack that up between 10, 20%. So I have clients that actually do 20% on Airbnb and short term rentals because they're actually not only getting the renter, they're going to do all the TIs. If it has to actually have any improvements, it's going to do the turn, it's going to do the maintenance, the cleaning. So those kind of people are the, the owners of the property can really be remote and you can run that kind of a service. And by the way, when I talk about you running a company, that doesn't mean you have to do the work. You can hire people to do the work and you actually be the owner, not the operator. So those are decisions you have to make. Being in the real estate rental business is phenomenal, especially if you can do that brokering, like I said, with the Airbnb short-term rentals. Long-term rentals aren't quite as profitable because you're not going to have the turns as much as you have on Airbnbs and short-term rentals. What else can you do? Cleaning companies. I know people think you got to be kidding. Cleaning companies are extremely lucrative. And again, you can hire a ton of people. Whenever you do your price margins on those kind of companies though, that's where most owners go wrong and lose their profitability. They don't charge enough to actually have someone else be doing all the work. So when people start in, in the cleaning services business, typically they'll start residential. I encourage you to go straight commercial as fast as you can. Every office needs somebody to come in and clean. If not once a week, it's, they're doing it every day. Why not own the company? Bob Proctor's first company was a commercial cleaning company, believe it or not. Super boring, not super sexy. So a lot of you, you've got to really watch your ego when you want to buy a company. You want to buy a company that's fabulous and has lots of bells and whistles. The simpler, the better, and the more profitable, the less moving parts. Now, before I go to a few more of the businesses, I want you to be here five days a week. I'm here on this channel, not for my health, but for you, for your business and financial education. So click the subscribe button, click the notification link, be here every day. And by the way, this is a great video to have your kids start watching. Any of your kids that are five and older can be on this channel. It's very appropriate. Some of the content's a little higher. Why not have them get into it, right? My kids grew up with all of this to why they know so much about, you know, companies and leading. So if you the companies that you might want to consider. So self-storage is phenomenal, extremely lucrative. Again, your startup cost for a lot of these is not what we're talking about. We're talking about the profitability of them. So there will be some startup costs. If you need help getting funding or how to do any of the business plans or actually, you know, get that ramp up, get your corporation, get any of that set up, make sure you click on the link below, talk to our team and get a strategy session with one of our teammates. Other things that are super lucrative, by the way, I want you to be in the comments right now. What boring businesses are you thinking about or that you've seen? Again, we've talked about cleaning, rental, storage units, RV parks. RV parks are phenomenal, startup costs, but once they're up and running, we have another project that's coming into our community right now. It's actually a really cool mall concept. So it's on an outdoor property. So it's sort of like, think about like a flea market or like a farmer's market. So think about a flea market or farmer's market, but people are renting actually small, think of like Home Depot sheds. So from anywhere from a day or a week or a month rental, it's kind of a whole up and coming way for startup businesses, but you provide the property and then they rent the actual sheds from you. So that's kind of a mall concept that's coming. Again, not sexy, not fun, extremely profitable. Marketing is always going to be your biggest challenge where most people have misunderstandings and fail is they don't know how to market and they don't know how to sell. So you can't take your employee skill set and bring it over here to being a great entrepreneur. So as an employee, you don't know what it takes to be an entrepreneur. What does it take? It takes great marketing, sales, it takes accounting, fulfillment, operations, 
technology, customer service. So once you have those aspects of the company set and you hire properly, then you can either hire managers once you get profitable enough, or you can stay as the owner operator, up to you. What other companies do you think are boring and extremely profitable? So the one I'm not gonna leave out, which is one I've been in for over 20 years, which is this one, is author, speaker, trainer. I've been doing this for actually more than 20 years because before this, I was doing the same sorts of things in the health world. Extremely lucrative when you can set up a proper mastermind, mentoring, coaching attached to some sort of a big best-selling book. So think about what you wanna do. We'd love to see your comments and we'd love to help you get your next profitable business or your first profitable business off the ground. So if you have any questions or wanna make a request, go to asklaurel.com, join our membership. You can come on an Ask Laurel call and talk to me and we'll do a quick little money makeover on you, a quick little sequencing on what you need to do. And you can come with some business ideas of what's more profitable. Love to give some insights. I've had over 100 companies in my life, so I know a little bit about a lot of them. Talk to you tomorrow.